Hi, thanks for joining me as I work on some more examples and approaches to general equilibrium. Now, in this one, we're going to be looking at how we can use or calculate the percent that a reaction preceded. And this, I think, will become even more valuable when you get into acid-base equilibrium. So let's take a look at this one. I have two moles in a one liter container. So I have a two molar solution. I have none of my product. Now it tells me that 20% of my HI has decomposed. So I'm going to fill out my chart here. Now, the percent that a reaction proceeds is um, the amount that reacted, which in our framework is your C in your rice or your change, divided by your initial amount times 100. So the problem tells me that 20% reacted. Well, my change was 2x, and I started with 2. So 2x over 2 times 100 is 20%. Some of you are going to see this intuitively, and, and you will know how to solve the problem much more quickly. I'm, I'm doing this in a little bit more detail uh, to help people out for those harder questions. So if I solve for x, I get 0.2. So now, if I plug in 0.2 for 2 here, so I have 2 minus 0.4, I'm going to get my hi at equilibrium to be 2 minus 2 times x and that's equal to 1.6 and my i2 at equilibrium is x so that's 0 0.2 and my h2 at equilibrium is also 0 0.2 if you set up kc for this it's i2 h2 over HI squared, okay? So if I plug my equilibrium values into KC, you should get a value. If I've done my math right and you do your math right, I got 0.0156. Now, I haven't noticed this in any of my other videos, so I wanna make sure I point this out. K values are unitless. Now, to understand why they are unitless uh, really requires getting into a more advanced analytical class um, where they would talk about something called activities instead of molarities. I don't think that's necessary right now. Just know that K is a unitless value. Okay, so that's how I used percent in that case. In the next question, we'll calculate percent. It's a little more awkward, and you'll see why I think when we do this question. So I've got 2,000 Kelvin. I'm synthesizing NO from nitrogen and oxygen. And these, this is a gas phase. Okay, um, it's a gaseous solution. I've got all gases. Um, I do have a dilution. Oh man, I've got volumes and I added them together and then diluted to a final volume of V2. Now that would have been really easy to miss. So that's why you want to use this checklist. I probably would not have paid enough attention to it. So you've got to think very carefully on that. So we've got um, volumes going to volumes. So now my N2 initial is 10 times 2.5. And my final volume, once I mix them up and put them in the final container, um, was 100 times my new volume. And notice I have the same values for oxygen. And so that's the same. These end up both being 0 0.25 molar. Now, this time, if you'll notice, I actually have an initial amount of my product. 
And so I have to dilute that as well. So my initial NO after dilution, so be careful, got 10 times 8.4 times 10 to the minus 2. That was brought up to the 100. And its new molarity, too, is 0 0.0084. Four. Now, I gave you the hint, or I'm giving us the hint here to calculate Q, but here's the deal. You're not always going to be given that hint. Sometimes problems give scaffolding and sometimes they don't. And so, what you want to do is make sure you look at how many initials you have. Ah, oh, gotta have that coffee. All right, since I have initials of all of my substances, we have to calculate Q. We need to calculate Q in order to find out whether this will proceed to make product to establish equilibrium or reactant to establish equilibrium. I'm going to set up my K expression. Q is solved the same way. The only difference is that Q is always done with initial values. So I'm always funneling in from my I row to get to Q. And if you plug that into Q using those initial values, I got 0 0.00113. And you know what I'm going to tell you. Plug those values in, check our math. Now, what we have to do is compare Q to K. Now, K for the synthesis is 4 times 10 to the minus 4th. So in our case, K is less than Q. In other words, Q is too big. I have too much product. And the only way I can get rid of it is to consume product and form reactant. Okay, so remember if you put K on the left-hand side, the greater than, equal than sign points to the direction you need to shift to establish your equilibrium. So I have plus X, plus X, minus 2X, 0 0.25 plus X, 0 0.25 plus X, in 0.0084 minus 2x. Okay, again, this looks like it's going to be some big hairy math, but fortunately for us, there is a simplification. You won't have to use the quadratic equation. So 4.0 times 10 to the minus fourth, these are the same. Oh, you know. Okay, so I've got NO, so I've got 0 0.0084 minus 2x squared over 0 0.25 plus x times 0 0.25 plus x. So that's 0 0.25 plus x squared, right? 0 0.25 plus x times 0.25 plus x is 0.25 plus x squared. So then to simplify, we're going to take the square root of both sides, do a whole bunch of algebra, and we're going to find that x is equal to 1.17 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, so now if we plugged all those in, to get our equilibrium concentrations, because that's what the question asks us, or what are all of our equilibrium concentrations, our N2 at equilibrium is equal to our O2 at equilibrium, and that is 0 0.248 molar. Don't forget those units. And my NO at equilibrium I ended up with 0 0.00498. And I'm sure you're going to rush to class to tell me if I did some algebra errors there if you want to make it up. 
All right, now the last thing this question asks us to do is calculate how, what percent of the reaction proceeded, and I'm going to do my starting amount here. So my percent that the reaction proceeded is what I started with. Well, what part of that reacted? Well, that was this value right here, 2x. So that would be 2 times 1.17 times 10 to the minus 3 times 100. And when I did that calculation, mind you, I did it with something of a cold, I got 41%. So let's check that out. Hope I was able to help you. This was a rather complicated question. So good luck as you journey through the wonderful world of chemistry.